good morning akshay good morning shilpa and uh, yasmin is not yet joined but we can start the we'll recording start recording is started so who will read sunki will you read yes i will read go ahead therefore we accept the truth on which the philosophies of the supra cosmic absolute take their stand in lusanism itself even if we contest its ultimate conclusions can still be accepted as a way in which the soul in mind the mental being has to see things in a spiritual pragmatic experience when it cuts itself up, when it cuts itself off from the becoming in order to approach and enter into the absolute but also since the becoming is real and is inevitable in the very self power of of the infinite and eternal this too is not a complete philosophy of existence it is possible for the soul in the becoming to know itself as the being and possess the becoming to know itself as infinite in essence but also as a as the infinite self as the infinite self expressed in the finite the timeless eternal eternal regarding itself and its works in the founding status and the developing motion of a time eternity this realization is the culmination of the becoming it is the fulfillment of the being in its dynamic reality this too then must be part of the total truth of things for it alone gives a full spiritual significance <clears throat> to the universe and justifies the soul in manifestation on explanation of things that deprives cosmic and individual existence of all significance cannot be the whole explanation or the solution it pro- so the solution it proposes the sole true issue okay so he is going to he has told us what are the different uh, philosophy he has told himself also what his philosophy is that he accepts that there is an absolute at the highest level and that there is a movement and a manifestation in the lower level and both are real okay both are real they are not to be discarded the materialist says that there is no absolute and the uh, the yogi says that there is no matter okay so observer says both have to be accepted so now we read each sentence today what we read and we'll see what is said therefore we accept the truth on which the philosophies of the supra cosmic absolute take their stand okay so the the philosophies which accept the supra cosmic absolute we take their stand we accept them who is the we serve them okay illusionism itself even if we contest its ultimate conclusions can still be accepted as a way in which the soul in mind the mental being has to see things in its spiritual pragmatic experience when it cuts itself off from the becoming in order to approach and enter into the absolute for simply saying is interesting he is saying that even the if you accept the highest level i i accept it but if you say that matter is only reality then i don't accept it okay so that's what he said <clears throat> therefore we accept the truth now he is saying so he is saying that even illusionism he is accepting partially okay illusionism is mayavada and it's also buddhism also forms part of the same group okay of illusionism itself even as it is in this way was coming from jasmin brother okay so <clears throat> he is saying now he is accepting illusionism in a very less severe what he is saying illusionism itself even if we contest its ultimate conclusions can still be accepted as a way in which the soul in mind the mental being has to see things in a spiritual pragmatic experience when it cuts itself off from the becoming in order to approach and enter into the absolute 
so what you saying is that when the mayavadi or the buddhist cuts himself off from the physical world which he is calling the becoming then he enters into the spiritual planes of consciousness and he sees the physical world as unreal so he says i can accept that okay because there is a solution, there is a it can be modified you go even higher up and then you will see that the physical world is not unreal so he says you can accept that because that's the way you see the soul in mind but in the soul in super mind this is totally different thing okay so when he saying soul in mind he is talking of level 2 okay the soul, because the mind is ever higher mind elevated mind into the mind over mind okay so he accepts it. when it cuts itself off from the becoming in order to approach and enter into the absolute but also since the becoming is real and inevitable in the very self power of the infinite and eternal this too is not a complete philosophy of existence so although he accepts temporarily he does not accept fully the mayavadi and the buddhist philosophies it's not complete incomplete yet acceptable it is possible for the soul in the becoming to know itself as a being and possess the becoming so what is he saying this is something that the materialist will not agree okay it is possible for the soul in the becoming in the physical world to know itself as a being and how does it do that by yoga okay to know itself as a being the being is a static condition the brahmic consciousness and possess the becoming okay now possess the becoming is even one more step when you go to the brahmic consciousness and possess the becoming he is speaking of shirdos his own philosophy okay <clears throat> to know itself as infinite in essence but also as a infinite self expressed in the finite the timeless eternal regarding itself and its works in the founding status and the developing motion of time eternity so the buddhist is saying that the world is an is a illusion and he escapes so some say it is not full because the soul even when it is in the lower level of the physical world it can know the being it can know the reality of the brahman consciousness and also it can possess the becoming possess the becoming what does it mean it means that you can be master of your body 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 mind life okay possession always implies mastery whatever i possess i have full mastery over it so that's what he is saying okay <laughs> this uh, founding self is developing more than it is this realization is a culmination of the becoming okay? when you know that you can possess the physical world and be master of it this is a realization is a culmination of the becoming the becoming can slowly go towards the divine manifestation okay it can become divine in steps it is a fulfillment of the being in its dynamic reality this too then must be part of the total truth of things for it alone gives a full spiritual significance to the universe and justifies the soul in manifestation so <clears throat> what he is saying is that the mayavadi is going half way but we want to go the full way we want to even say that the soul can become master of the universe okay and the Uh, it can also possess its own body mind life possess be, be master of body mind life an explanation of things that deprives cosmic and individual existence of all significance cannot be the whole explanation of the or the solution it proposes to it proposes the soul to issue so he is talking about buddhism buddhism and mayavadi if they say that the physical world is permanently unreal i cannot accept it it cannot be because the divine has created the becoming and if he has created the becoming how can there be no meaning to it it's not possible so therefore it's a part solution only that's what solution okay so next we go to the 
the next paragraph, the next information put forward. We'll read that now. So, Sunki read this. So now next is Shilpa, you have not read for a long time. Would you like to read? Shilpa may not be there. Yes, yes, yes. yes right. Okay, go ahead, read. The next affirmation. Yes. Just a minute. Uh, the next affirmation. Huh? Wait a minute. What is the page number? Sorry. Page number is oh, 686. Okay. The next the next affirmation. Yeah. No, what is where it starts? It starts with the next affirmation. Oh, I don't know. One six okay. eight six. Yes. Yes, the next affirmation which we put forward is that the fundamental reality of the absolute is to our spiritual perception, a divine existence, consciousness and delight of being, which is supersonic reality, self-existent, but also the secret truth underlying the whole manifestation. For the fundamental truth of being must necessarily be the fundamental truth of becoming. All is a manifestation of that, for it dwells even in all that seems to be its opposites and its hidden compulsion on them. To disclose it is the cause of evolution on inconscience to develop from itself its secret consciousness on the apparent non-being to reveal in itself the occult spiritual existence on the insensible neutrality of matter to develop a various delight of being which must grow, setting itself free from its minor terms, its, its contrary dualities of pain and pleasure into the essential delight of existence, the spiritual ananda. Okay, so now, <coughs> Chair, we're going to make another statement. But what I'll do, I'll read the summary and then we go on to the... <coughs> details of all the sentences. So first he has told us that all the philosophies which accept to very, very simple terms, if they accept God, I will accept their philosophy. <laughs> That's what he's saying. But instead of saying God, he says the absolute. And now he's saying that the absolute is such an under. Okay. So next what he's saying, the first he says the absolute we have to accept. Then it is acceptable to me. We say next that the absolute is a divine Satchit Ananda. He has not told us what the absolute was. Now he is telling us. Okay? It is an existence that is conscious of itself and possesses force and bliss. It is self-existent and the secret truth of being as well as that of becoming. Okay? That means its manifestation. God is real and means God is manifesting in the physical world, that also is real. The becoming, the universe, is a manifestation of the being. Okay? To put in simple terms, if you want, the world is a manifestation of the divine. Okay? The truth of spirit is also the truth of matter, because in a sense, they are the same. Then, the becoming that seems to be the opposite of being, contains in itself all the potential truths of being, and these truths, it is compelled to unburden itself in the ascending evolution. From matter emerge all the wonderful miracles of the spirit. First in life, and its infinite variety of color, form, and quality, and next, the miracle of mind, that actually is matter, capable of thoughts, ideas, imaginations. Finally, emerges the soul that seeks and can find God even in the world. Okay? Then, all the dualities and oppositions of the world get harmonized in the upper hemisphere. So, they seem to be opposite, but they are actually essentially not opposite. This is what he is saying in, the, in this one. So, now he has told us that the absolute is the Satchitananda. So, now I go sentence by sentence. 
She remember very carefully. He told us only first. He's going step by step. He has not told us what he, the absolute is. Now he is telling us what the absolute is. The next affirmation, which we put forward, we we put forward means the integral philosophy. Okay, my view, which we put forward, is that the fundamental reality of the absolute is to our spiritual perception a divine existence. Existence, sat. Consciousness, chit. The delight of being. Ananda, which is a supra cosmic reality, it is not there in the physical world. It is hiding in the physical world, but it is there openly in the supra cosmos. If you want, it is self-existent. It is not created. The physical world is created, but it is itself uncreated. But also the secret truth underlying the whole manifestation. So not only is it openly available at the higher level. But it's also the secret truth of the in the lower level. That's what is meant. But also the secret truth underlying the whole manifestation. For the fundamental truth of being must necessarily be the fundamental truth of becoming. Because God is manifesting Himself, there is something of God in the manifestation. So essentially, it's the same. Again, we come back to the famous idea of the. Water, water vapor, and ice. Okay, essentially the same. All are uh, all are water only, but they take different forms. So the physical world is nothing but the Brahman, but taking a different form. Okay, so he accepted it. Fundamental truth of the being must necessarily be the fundamental truth of becoming. All is a manifestation of that. Now he is coming back to that word absolute of that with a T cap. Tad, okay. Why? Why does he use the word tad? Because it is impossible to describe it. You can say such an ananda, but it does not really uh, portray the whole thing because you may think that it is only such an ananda, but it is much more than that. That's why that. Okay. For it dwells even in all that seem to be its opposites. The physical world, everything seems to be the opposite of the divine. Okay, but he is there also inside. That's what he called it. For it dwells even in all that seem to be its opposites, and its hidden compulsion on them to disclose it is a cause of evolution. So what is hidden has to come out. Like the tree is hidden in the seed, but given the right conditions, the seed, the tree is bound to come out. Okay, it is compelled to come out. That's what they are saying, and the compulsion is the evolution. It comes out. <coughs> Hidden compulsion on them to disclose it is a cause of evolution. On inconscience to develop from itself its secret consciousness. On the apparent non-being to reveal in itself the occult spiritual existence. On the insensible neutrality of matter. To develop a various delight of being, which must go, setting itself free from its minor terms, its contrary dualities of pain and pleasure, into the essential delight of existence, the spiritual Ananda. So he is going into detail and telling that matter in its evolution will reveal all these traits. It will reveal matter as divine. It will reveal chit. The unconscious which you see in the physical world, it will show itself to be consciousness. It will show itself to be power, and it will also it will show itself to be honor. That's what it is. <clears throat> Now we go to the next one. The being is one, but this oneness is infinite and contains each. One by one is taken up. The being is one, and the manifestation is the many. Okay, so that he will take up. Who can read? Yes, man. You can read. Yes, yes, please. Go ahead. The being is one. The being is one, but this oneness is infinite and contain it contains in itself an infinite plurality or multiplicity of itself. The one is the all. It is not only an essential existence. But in all existence, 
the infinite multiplicity of the one and the eternal unity of the many are the two realities or aspects of one reality on which the manifestation is founded. By reason of this fundamental verity of the manifestation of the being presents itself to our cosmic experience in three poises, the supracosmic existence, the cosmic spirit, and the individual self in the many. But the multiplicity permits of a phenomenal division of consciousness and effectual ignorance in which the many, the individual, cease to become aware of the eternal self-existent oneness and are oblivious of the oneness of the cosmic self in which and by which they live, move and have their being. But by force of the secret unity, the soul is becoming, is urged by its own unseen reality and by the occult player pressure of evolutionary nature to come out of this state of ignorance and recover eventually the knowledge of the one divine being and its oneness with it and at the same time to recover its spiritual unity with, with all individual beings and the whole universe. It has to become aware not only of itself in the universe but of the universe in itself and of the becoming of cosmos as its greater self. The individual has to universalize himself and in the same movement to become aware of his supracosmic transcendence. The triple aspect of the reality must be included in the total truth of the soul and of the cosmic manifestation and this necessity must determine the ultimate trend of the process of evolutionary nature. So here again, I will read out the summary first and then we'll go to the details. Okay, so the summary is like this. The absolute being is one. But this one is not a sterile uniformity. It is pregnant of the many. Example, seed and the tree. The seed is one, but it contains all the different aspects of the tree. Bark, leaves, flowers, branches, fruits, okay, roots, everything. It is exactly this. The absolute, the divine is one, but he contains in himself the potentiality of everything that can be expressed through that one. That one is a concentrated oneness, but it is also an extended, though, this one second. Ah. Though undistributed, okay, it is that one is a concentrated oneness, but is also an extended, though undistributed, many. Okay? Now that's interesting. If you think about it, it is extended, but undistributed. In other words, it's like the one drop of water becomes a sea. But the sea is absolutely calm and quiet without movement. And when it starts meeting waves, it becomes distributed. Okay. So, very interesting what she is saying. First of all, there is a sea. The chit ghana. The absolute, like a black hole. It is concentrated in itself. That's a transcendent. Okay. Then it extends itself. Okay. The second level of the um, second poise of the supermind. It extends itself into this ocean. The water extends, but there's no movement in the ocean and there's no wave also. So it's an extended but undistributed oneness. In the third level, it starts distributing itself into waves. All the forms are created. Okay? So this is the triple status of the supermind that is describing here. First of all, there is a oneness, only one. Second, it extends itself. And third, it makes forms. Though undistributed. Oneness and multiplicity are, though seeming to be contrary to each other, the same reality, just one second, are really the same reality. In the becoming, 
the many contain the secret oneness and in the being the one contains the essence the potential of the many you come back to that famous uh, uh, sentence of the um, william blake no to see a world in a grain of sand a grain of sand can contain the whole universe okay and heaven in a wild flower in a wild flower the whole of heaven is there hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour so the whole universe is condensed into the atom and the atom contains the whole universe it can flower out from there that's it. the one and the many are essentially the same the one is one contains all the many and the many contain in potential the one so this is what you say because of the secret correlation of the one and the many the being takes three poisons the transcendent the cosmic and the individual but there is one thing to be noted in the becoming of the many a phenomenal division a separation of the being takes place and this division permits the ignorance which is the perception of the many only without the oneness so this is what is saying in the many when the dissolution of takes place the phenomenon of separateness comes in and what is that the ego the ego starts seeing everything as separate although this sense of separation is false it is not there it is possible to go to the cosmic consciousness and see the oneness of things the dividedness of things is not real okay just as the gita says vibhaktam eva tishthati avibhaktam vibhaktam eva tishthati although undivided it looks as though it is divided the many you know that's what is it this seeming division becomes an effectual and practical ignorance it is not real ignorance it is only practical and effectual because if you change your stand from level 1 to level 2 you start seeing the many as one you don't see the many but you see the oneness behind the many okay? it sees only the many loses sight of the one but in the, the the soul in ignorance is divine in essence this latent divinity urges it and goes it to become divinely perfect then the soul in the ignorance recovers its oneness with the other souls and attains cosmic consciousness it loses its ego which is the agent of division and separation and becomes universal okay again to understand this you can think of the grain of salt okay when thrown into water it becomes a salt solution it is not now limited in a personal form shape color size weight but it becomes everywhere so that's a real individual thus this triple aspect must necessarily be a part of the integral knowledge so divine takes three poisons transcendent cosmic and individual that's what is saying in the back okay so now we read there each sentence to understand the way he expresses all these things the being is one remember the being is that which is static and one without any differentiation like the ocean which is absolutely calm and quiet without any waves that's a being and it is one the universe is wherever you go in the sea there is only the sea no wave no difference at all no movement the being is one but this oneness is infinite and contains in itself an infinite plurality or multiplicity of itself it contains in essence all the multiple things that can it can exist the one is the all it is not only an essential existence but an all existence it contains everything the infinite multiplicity of the one and the eternal unity of the many are the two realities or aspects of the one reality on which on which the manifestation is founded so although we accept the 
physical world as a manifestation of the divine. And we accept that superficially they seem to be opposites, but they are really not opposites. That's what Sri Mukh pointed out. Essentially, they are one. By reason of this fundamental verity of the manifestation, the being presents itself to our cosmic experience in three poises. The supra-cosmic existence, which he calls the transcendent, the cosmic spirit, which he calls the universal or the cosmic, and the individual self in the many. So, there are the three. This supra-cosmos, if you want, the transcendent produces the universe, and the universe produces the individuals. But the multiplicity permits of a phenomenal division of consciousness. There is one problem. When this is divided, distributed rather, the one sea, one ocean starts making waves. Each wave gets the added sense of separateness from the others. That's the ego which comes in. Okay? That's what he's saying. Actually, there's no difference. Each wave is the same as other waves. But it starts seeing itself as separate. That's the problem. Okay? So, but the multiplicity permits of a phenomenal division of consciousness. Phenomenal, huh? not real. An effectual. Effectual ignorance. The word effectual is very interesting. It's an effect. It's not a cause. Okay? It is a result. The ignorance that you see here is a result. It's only a result of the division that happens. It's not essential. It is not real. It's not ultimate, the division. It's a supervision division. By reason of this fundamental ability of the manifestation, the being presents result to our cosmic experience in three points. The supracosmic existence, the cosmic spirit, and the individual self in the main. But the multiplicity permits of a phenomenal division of consciousness and effectual ignorance in which the many, the individuals, and the individuals include, include also animals, okay, and everything, even plants, cease to become aware of the eternal self-existent oneness and are oblivious of the oneness of the cosmic self in which and by which they live, move, and have their being. When ego comes in, the division, instead of being apparent, becomes real. That's what I'm okay. But real only at the surface, not in the deep. Okay. Now, but by force of the secret unity, the soul in becoming is urged by its own unseen reality and by the occult pressure of evolutionary nature to come out of this state of ignorance and recover eventually the knowledge of the one divine being and its oneness with it and at the same time to recover its spiritual unity with all individual beings and the whole universe. So this sentence I'll put it in a slightly different way. The divine has plunged himself into the thickness and darkness of matter. But because he is essentially divine, he wants to, he is stifled. He is absolutely um, stifled. He can't, he, is, he wants to breathe freely. He can't breathe freely. So he has to emerge. The emergence is because of the secret unity of the one in the many. Okay? It has to break out. That's what Sven is saying. But by force of the secret unity, the soul in becoming is urged by its own unseen reality. And what is an unseen reality? The divine presence. And by the occult pressure of evolutionary nature to come out of this state of ignorance and recover eventually, ultimately, the knowledge of the divine being and its oneness with it, and at the same time to recover its spiritual unity with all the individual beings and the whole universe. Mind you, even when you go to the spiritual level of consciousness and you start seeing the spiritual unity, it's a spiritual unity. 
you see the physical forms is separate but you don't you are not deceived by it you see the connectedness of everything that's what i'm saying that's why you see spiritual unity not physical unity spiritual unity you start seeing the dividedness dividedness as something phenomenal not the real it has to become aware not only of itself in the universe but of the universe in itself and of the being so the individual has to realize that he is the divine but then also he is the universe and what is that that's a cosmic consciousness so when you are in the cosmic consciousness then you realize that you are the universe and the universe is here within you it has to become aware not only of itself in the universe but of the universe in itself and of the being of cosmos as a greater self the individual has to universalize himself and at the same time to become aware of his supra cosmic transcendence so he must also realize that he is the divine this triple aspect of the reality must be included in the total truth of the soul and the cosmic manifestation and this necessity must determine the ultimate trend of the process of evolution in nature he is giving you all these things one by one first he told you that there is an absolute and all philosophies you don't accept the absolute they will reject next he says that the absolute is the sachidananda and the sachidananda manifests itself in the physical world therefore we accept also the physical world as real but there is a division and an ignorance so now he says there is an ignorance which also has to be conquered he is slowly giving you the whole picture so what's the time 38 so i don't think we can read the next one all views of existence is quite long we will keep it for next time all views of existence that stop short of the transcendent and ignore it must be incomplete accounts of the truth so we will stop here today and make a note we'll read from all views of existence you can slowly see yes i yes. make a note ranga da how same way is slowly <coughs> revealing himself in paragraphs not in sentences in paragraphs that's why it's difficult to understand his uh, style of writing because he doesn't write one single thing normally what one would do is you give a, a small description of your self of your philosophy in one para and then you start giving details now same the start giving details right from the beginning so some details are not revealed in the beginning and that creates a problem he told us first only absolute so we don't know what that absolute is then next para he tells you that is absolute is sachidananda but the sachidananda is not only at the higher level it's also at the lower level now next he says at the lower level there is an ignorance so slowly slowly and the ignorance is not real it is unreal so that's why it's not so easy to understand what he says that's why the summary is can help okay i stop here today for our everybody thank you ragada thank you hope you had a wonderful day yesterday yes very nice